So I've been posting some Zendrome videos lately and some of my friends have asked me what's the layout and what's going on here. So I thought I'd give you just a quick guided tour about the way I've laid this instrument out. This is the Zendrome laptop. This is a custom shop model, meaning it's not the regular stock standard pad layout here. This is something I came up with. I wanted it to, I wanted to cram as many pads on there as I could. Um, this is the maximum number that will be allowed um, by the software. And uh, David Haney, the Zendrum president and Inspector 109 has called this the LTD model, which stands for laptop dude. It's kind of an inside joke, but back in the old days of the forums, my Zendrum user forum name was Zendrum dude. So this is now the laptop dude model, the LTD. So this was the first one of its kind. And uh, this layout really works for me. So on the top here, these two sections, this is symmetrical with one exception. Um, this is just kind of the way I laid this out is this is where my hands kind of naturally go. I think it's kind of from conga playing. That's kind of where, I, where I'm thinking of this from. This is this hand position. So um, my normal layout is kind of for my hands to be right here. And so to make that work, I've had, I have these four set up for hi-hats and these four set up for snare drums. So I'll show you that right now. First of all, the hi-hats, these two, those are the hi-hat cymbals played with the tip of the stick on the top. And I have the pedal down here to the left so you can open and close it like a regular hi-hat would. I have my sample set up so that I have fully closed, partially like a third of the way open, two thirds open, and then all the way open. So you can hear hopefully all those levels. Um, over here outside of those are the same setup of uh, open to closed, but this is played with the edge of the stick on the side of the cymbal. So it's more of an accent. So it sounds like this. So here's the tip of the stick and here's the edge. That's kind of a subtle difference, but when you're playing like a rock beat on a drum set, you play it this way. Rather than, that, that sounds pretty kind of dry and dull when you're playing it with the tip the whole time. So if you play the edge on the accented notes, you have a little more realistic um, approach to the hi-hat. Also something like this. That's how we would really play on the hi-hat for real. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, the snare drum, uh, the regular head hit of the snare drum is right here in the middle. Uh, the rim shot I have over on the right side on this pad. I know a lot of drummers use their rim shot as their backbeat in rock beats. I don't really play that way very often, but I do use it a lot in fills and things when I want to accent a note. So I don't have one on my left. I typically use my left hand um, extra snare pad to be a cross stick. Also on this uh, rim shot pad here, the, the quietest hits are just the rim itself. So using those things together, I can get a lot of the different snare things that I might do, um, any kind of little sounds. So pretty realistic um, approach. So those four pads on each side are the hi-hat down here, perfectly symmetrical, snare drum with these being the head and these being the various rim types. So that's kind of my typical layout. If you add the bass drum pedal to that and the hi-hat pedal, which I already showed you, I can play things like this. So that's kind of my general rock beat approach. Now, if I want to go to the ride cymbal, I have the ride cymbal set up over here. Here is my, um, this is where you go to the ride on a regular drum set. So that's kind of what I wanted it to be up to the right here. So here's my ride cymbal. Play it on what's called the bow, just the regular flat surface of the cymbal with the tip of the stick. And then here's the bell. So then I can do things like this. When I'm playing in a jazz context, I also set up this pad here to be the ride cymbal, like the crash side of the ride cymbal. But for this drum set, I actually have just a crash cymbal here. This little button, I've assigned that to be the, the choke of the cymbal. So if I want to stop it, I can do that. 
So that's where my crash symbol is. So I can play. Of course, I have to have a crash on the left, um, which is over here. Also chokeable, but it's a different. It's a different symbol. It's a higher pitch symbol here, which is how I would do it on a regular drum set. So there's the ride, the crashes, the hi hat. So that's my kind of general groove uh, stuff there. These four pads on either side, again, it's symmetrical on the top here. These are four toms. This is a 10 inch tom, 12, 14, and 16. So I, I kind of have this uh, circular pattern here. Just It just made sense to me that going from the snare drum straight up to the tom, which is again, what happens on a real drum set and going around clockwise, which is what's happening here on the right. That's what happens on a regular drum set as well. I thought about doing it this way for both sides, but just going up symmetrically made more sense to me. So it's a little counterintuitive to go from here outward rather than moving the same direction like you would on a drum set, but it works for me. So that's my my regular drum set. I've got my snare drum, my toms, four of them, hi-hats down here, ride cymbal, two crash cymbals, and then some additional stuff that I have on here. Here's a splash cymbal. Um, sorry, that one doesn't mute. Um, and that's where I have it on my drum set as well, straight up from the toms. So again, that makes sense to me. Here's another splash cymbal. Although I do, this pad kind of becomes auxiliary on some of my drum sets. I have it as a hand clap or some other things that I might need for a specific song or for a specific thing I want to play. But for right now, it's a splash cymbal. Over here, again, where it would be on the drum set is a china cymbal. And then over here is another auxiliary pad. I have this as a tambourine on some kits that I'm using, but this one right now is just a higher pitched china cymbal. Those are two uh, different china symbols. This is an 18, this is a 14. But again, this one can be almost anything. It's just uh, right now that's what I have it set to be. Down here are, are two of the same. Again, it's symmetrical, um, the same sound, but it's a cowbell. The reason I have one on both, both sides is I use them in different ways. Sometimes I do this. Just adding it into an existing rock beat. So that way I can I can still play the rock beat with just my right hand. This is what I do on a regular drum set yet again. Um, and then this is when I want to use the cowbell as more of the riding um, surface itself, not just adding into something, but having it be the main thing. So like a mambo. Or a cha-cha. So um, also just something interesting here, the sample is set up so that the quieter hits are the tip on the top of the cowbell and the louder hits are the open mouth with the edge of the stick. So you can get that, this kind of a sound. So that's again, kind of more of a re realistic approach for that instrument. Lastly, um, I have some just auxiliary percussion stuff here. These are some congas. So this one is um, kind of a muted hit, and then it's, it fades to a slap when you hit it harder on the conga drum. And this is the tumba, the lower conga drum, and that's some open hits. So you can add that into a rock beat. So various things you can do with those um, conga drums. And then lastly, these two up here are uh, two timbales. Um, it's actually one timbale tuned differently um, for two different sounds. And that's, um, so that's my whole layout. That's the, I think I've hit on everything that's there. And now I'll just play you just a couple of things just so you can see how it all works together.
so hope you enjoyed that and let me know if you have questions thanks